During a forensic autopsy, the medical examiner carefully inspects the body, both inside and out, for any clues as to how or why the person died. Each organ is studied closely as they can reveal hidden information about what happened to the victim in the hours leading up to their death. In terms of the stomach and digestive system, forensic scientists can use the stomach contents and the degree to which the food has been digested to estimate how long after eating the victim likely died. At the point of death, our organs shut down and can no longer function properly. There is a muscular valve that connects the stomach to the small intestine, and when someone dies, the valve snaps shut and blocks anything from moving through the digestive system, effectively creating a gastronomical time capsule for forensic experts. Typically, a meal will be fully digested and the stomach left empty between four and six hours after eating, although this can obviously vary from person to person and depends on the type and size of meal. Because we chew our food to help digestion, the contents of the stomach often have to be viewed on a slide under a microscope. Then forensic examiners would be able to identify the characteristics of the food, although this isn't always as straightforward as it sounds. If someone had eaten a meal that included meat, cheese or processed foods before they died, it might not be visible to forensic scientists even under a microscope. This is because sources of protein don't have cell walls, so once it comes into contact with the hydrochloric acid and enzymes within the stomach, it's quickly broken down into small chains of amino acids, becoming mushy and indistinguishable. Plant cells found in fruit and vegetables have fibrous cell walls that human enzymes can't break down, and so the outer structure of the plant cell generally remains intact as it moves through the digestive system, making it easier to be identified later by forensic scientists. Jane Bock, a plant anatomy and evolutionary expert, and her colleague David Norris, an animal ecologist, began working at Colorado University Boulder's Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology in the late 1960s. In 1982, the two were approached by a local coroner for some assistance in a case. A young woman had been murdered just outside of Denver and the police needed to know what specific food was left in her stomach. Their main suspect at the time was the young woman's boyfriend. He insisted that he had last seen her the day before she was killed when they went to McDonald's together for lunch. They had ordered hamburgers that consisted of two meat patties, lettuce, cheese and special sauce inside a sesame seed burger bun. However, the medical examiner's initial observations of the victim's stomach contents didn't appear to match the boyfriend's story. If the victim had eaten a different meal before she was killed, that would mean the boyfriend couldn't have killed her since he had an alibi for later in the day. In order to either rule the boyfriend in or out as a suspect, Jane Bock and David Norris examined the histological slides that contained the victim's stomach contents under a microscope. They found no evidence of a hamburger and instead they were able to identify fragments of partially digested onion, red cabbage and kidney beans, food that would not have been served at McDonald's at the time. For police, this meant that the victim had not been killed by her boyfriend after they had eaten lunch, but likely hours after they had seen each other. Years later, serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to her murder and confirmed the police's suspicions that the victim's final meal was from a Wendy's, which at the time had a salad bar offering the same kinds of food that had been found in the victim's stomach. Luckily for the victim's boyfriend, the investigators had used the stomach contents to narrow down the victim's likely time of death and were able to rule him out as a suspect. This case shows just how important the stomach contents can be to help investigators deduce the likely time of death. However, the findings should always be used in conjunction with other scientific methods and information. <laughs>